All right, I am at the Chateau in Fontainebleau and I only have about <laughs> half an hour before all of this closes because I am learning the hard way this week that if you would like to see tourist attractions outside of Paris, and especially if you don't speak the language, you need to wake up really early in the morning and get going really early in the morning. And you need to suck it up and buy tour tickets or something because you are gonna be lost in the wilderness trying to attempt to do anything on your own if you do not speak the language. And, uh, and you need to give yourself time. <laughs> like uh, these tourist attractions, like particularly this park surrounding the Chateau in Fontainebleau, close by 5 p.m. usually. Uh, and also it's the winter and also, you know, things get dark very early. So, uh, Laveau, I'm gonna juxtapose card. As ordered by Louis Catals, Louis the Fourteenth, the gardener and architect, opened the east-west perspective on the canal and dug the square and the pool surrounded by the four green sections and teach them. <laughs> Round basin overlooked by a statue of Romulus is surrounded by a water-filled trench that provides the only boundary between the garden and the forest. Okay, so uh, My problem is that I have taken my sleeping in habits from New York to France with me. So I'm waking up at one o'clock, two o'clock in the afternoon, and then I'm running out the door and uh, trying to get to these tourist attractions in a very uh, speedy kind of way. And, uh, and today was like, also, you really want to be able to speak at least a functional amount of the language. And I'm learning that I don't even have a functional amount of the language down. So I got extremely lost in the train station and I missed my train and I had to wait for another hour for a commuter rail train to take me to Fontainebleau after I finally found it. So, good job, Peter. <laughs> but hey, uh, at least now as a tour guide, I have an excellent argument to make that you kind of want to hire a tour company <laughs> to do anything in in a in a country to which you have never been and especially if there is a language you do not speak uh well not that that applies because my tours not that that applies to my tour company uh because all of our tours are in english but uh, but nevertheless, I think even if I hired a tour guide that speaks French, at least I would wind up going to the right place at the right time. I, I don't know. Maybe I would, maybe I wouldn't. I think I'm, uh, <laughs> trying to glean something, some kind of lesson to take away from this experience. Uh, so I would imagine that Fontainebleau Castle is absolutely crowded in the spring and summer and early fall. And, uh, I'm here in rainy January. And, uh, the appeal is just not what it probably would be. <laughs> Also, uh, for some reason, all of the statues are covered over with uh, blankets. I don't know if that's to protect them from the elements in the wintertime, but uh, 
it doesn't really um, serve my purposes being here in the winter time very well. So here are some swans and some, I guess they're all swans. I guess the, these are the grown-up swans and baby swans. Hey, swans. Hey. How you guys doing? What's going on? Is that, I guess that's how they sleep? I don't know. I don't really know. I guess I'm gonna leave them alone, let them enjoy their slumber. that I really have the time to be walking out around here like this, but <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll give it a, a try anyway. I wish I could go inside the, uh, the, the castle the inside of the castle rivals the beauty of Versailles, but I can't find the entrance to the castle. And I think I can't enter the castle without tickets anyway, so. And I followed a bunch of signs that said billetterie, which means ticket office. But at the end of all the signs that said ticket office, there was no ticket office. So, Okay. <laughs> Say la vie, I guess. Okay. Well, this looks like the back of a statue. So, uh... So there's your, your back of a statue right over there. Um... There are some fronts of statues that are visible from over here. Uh, there must be something pretty spectacular. Okay. Uh, nothing that spectacular. <laughs> it looked like it was curving in and uh, that there must be something pretty remarkable over there, but well, no. <laughs> okay, uh, so I guess I'm going to Oh man, if I had just been able to find my train and get on the train in time, then, uh, then we wouldn't be having this problem. But c'est la vie. I guess the, the big lesson that I, that I have to learn from this trip to France is that A, wake up early, B, suck it up and buy tickets to things. And C, learn some freaking French. <laughs> uh, so this is what I mean. Here are our statues covered in blankets. So, uh, <laughs> womp, womp. Okay. Uh, I 
looks like a nice place to uh, come hang out if you are a local. I hope that I'm able to get back into the courtyard when I go over there. Otherwise, I'm going to have a hell of a time finding my way out of here. There is your Fontainebleau Chateau, everyone. Take your screenshots now. Click, click. All right. So I'm really self-conscious about my breath because on the train here, I was watching one of my videos from the other night. And man, I sound like I have emphysema on these things. Like, I hope I don't sound like that in person when I'm with people. Then that means that I'm constantly surrounded by people who are too polite to tell me that I sound like I have emphysema. See, I want to go over to that thing over there, but I don't think I have time. And this must be the magic, legendary Fontainebleau forest over here. But, uh, well, walking in there would be a one-way ticket to getting lost and stranded in Fontainebleau. Fant I guess it's Fontainebleau, right? Fontainebleau. I don't even know if this entire video, I don't even know if I've been pronouncing the name of the, the place I'm in correctly. <laughs> I think it's Font Fontainebleau. B-L-E-U. Well, whatever. We'll just call it Fontainebleau because that sounds better in my opinion. So that's something over there, and that must be the legendary forest that is referenced. And I'm not going to either because I'm just gonna wind up stranded here if I do. Trying to do something a little unique with this video and have as many disruptions where I have to piece it together on uh, iMovie. As few disruptions as possible. Because oh, that requires... Oh. Not a lot of work, but it could... I, I am using up pretty much all the memory on my phone. And um, I'm in sort of a... a, a, a play, I, I'm sort of playing a game of chicken with Apple that Apple is not even aware of. So it's probably... It's not making any difference. But I, I'm resisting purchasing iCloud because... Uh, because it's just, uh, well, I, I don't want to get into it, but I, I kind of feel like it's a ripoff. So I go with, uh, I go with a th another thing. I go with Dropbox. I upload all my files to there. And, uh, 
And I guess that's all there is to say about that. But uh, since I don't use iCloud, I could very well wind up filling up the rest of the space on my phone by piecing together a whole bunch of different videos at this point and then adding that one giant file in addition to all the smaller files that will have been created and that could be problematic. So I'm trying to avoid doing that, which is why I'm trying to avoid doing multiple different filmings. So that was your Fontainebleau uh, gardens, I guess. Jardin de Fontainebleau. Fontainebleau. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it just beautiful in winter when everything is gray and dead? So I guess that's the, the rules of visiting Chateau Fontainebleau. Bleau. Here we are. Okay, so I'm going to go into the courtyard over here. Fun day, uh, founded in 1921, the Schools of Art, American Art. Oh, I guess uh, the center of schools closed in 1920, in uh, 2021. So this, this appears to be an entranceway to nowhere, and that appears to be an entranceway to nowhere. I mean, they're not to nowhere, those are doors, but I'm guessing they're locked. And, and I feel like even if they aren't, I'm not supposed to enter there, and I do not want to be in Fontainebleau Jail. Fontainebleau Jail, whatever, whatever the name of this place is. So here is the courtyard. of the Chateau Fontainebleau, bleu, bleu, bleu. And I don't wanna linger too long. I took a couple of photographs over here, but uh, there is the the pond or the water, Lo de Fontainebleau. Oh, it must be Fontaine. Maybe it's, I don't know. God help me. <laughs> oh. Is this an entrance over here? The place closes in 10 minutes, so... <laughs> it's not like it's gonna help me at all. Yeah. 
yeah, so this is, this is, I guess, where I was supposed to enter all along. Uh, not sure what the deal is now. Bonjour. Uh, do you speak English? Yes, no, no. Film it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, uh, as I suspected, I have to get up very, very early in the morning if I want to go out and do things. So, maybe I will come back to Fontainebleau, or I will just go to Versailles. I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, what an epic fail. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. I hope if, uh, even in the absence of the majesty of the interior of this castle, I hope that my <laughs> insane amounts of incompetence is uh, sufficient to at least entertain you. <laughs> because this, this was very incompetently handled by me. <laughs> It's okay, because the only person I failed is myself, really, but, uh, but yeah, did a good job. So I guess I will, uh, go out into the community of Fontainebleau, Fontainebleau, still don't know what the name is don't even know where I am <laughs> and uh, walk the streets a little bit and well maybe some of that will make up for the lack of interesting stuff uh, I don't even like I have no idea what this what the difference between this building is and the chateau itself, don't know. But uh, yeah, I guess I'm gonna try and do Versailles and I'll just, I'll just pay the fricking fee, whatever it is, whatever they want. I'll just uh, show up at the crack of dawn and pay the fee and not think that I get to sleep in and not think that I get to get away with not paying for stuff. <laughs> uh, I feel like I entered over there. Uh, where do, how do I get out of here? I guess, I guess I have to go this way. <laughs> okay. So, this is, uh, This is how, how things went. <laughs> uh, when, when you uh, decide to wake up at two in the afternoon and you just kind of throw wet spaghetti on the wall and see what sticks, uh, not very much sticks, apparently. So I hope, uh, I hope everyone who's watching this at is at, is at least enjoying the uh, absurdity and perhaps the view as well. The, the exterior is pleasing to the eye. That's, that's for sure. Another Louis XIV castle in Fontainebleau, Fontainebleau. That's, that's what I'm calling it now, Fontainebleau, Fontainebleau, since I don't know what it is. Since I don't know where the hell I am. But uh, when you don't have anyone really guiding you, and you don't speak the language, and you're lazy, and you don't want to spend money, well, all of those things add up to this. <laughs>
All right. So, Chateau de Fontainebleau. It's got to be Bleu, right? Because Bleu would be B-L-E-U. So it's got to be E-A-U is an O sound. So it's got to be Fontainebleau. True home of the kings. Napoleon himself put it that way. It's a world of achievements of great artists. So I guess, uh, I guess that's where we were walking around before, the Grand Paltel. And um, what was that, what was this thing over here? It says there's a number six. Mantenon. I don't know if that. I, I don't know anything. <laughs> uh, so my guess is that I entered over here. So I walked through the Jardin de Dion when I first got here. I didn't take any pictures or anything. Uh, okay. Well, C'est la vie. And there's the Hotel de Londres. That is your Chateau de Fontaine. Chateau de Fontaine. Again, I have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh man, I can't. One of the things I, I can't wait uh, to get to New York for is the fact that I kind of know what I'm talking about there. And, uh, and I'm realizing how ignorant and unaware I am on this trip, although, you know what, it's, it's good for me, it's good, it's, it's humbling. A nice reminder that I don't know as much as I think I know. So, uh, so look, we've got this beautiful, I guess this is the theater? Le Troubadour. It's the restaurant. But what is the front of this building? What is it? Uh, oh, so that's uh, the Domaine de Fontainebleau. So this... I guess was I don't know do I even bother trying to guess what it is see over there is the the Jardin de Fontainebleau where I entered pretty sure that door is locked now but uh but yeah there's your or Fontainebleau I keep saying Fontainebleau it's Fontainebleau <laughs> I can't even hold my camera straight because I'm trying not to trip on these uh, cobblestones and it's resulting in me looking down and not looking at the camera. Yep, that's the Teatro Municipal. So they have a municipal theater. Can't can't say that we have a municipal theater anywhere in America. We, all of our theaters are pretty much private theaters. But uh, but yeah, there's the general Fontainebleau Bleau estate. And here's a uh, here's some downtown Fontainebleau for you. Try not to. Trying desperately not to get killed. You know. 
as I've said before, getting killed is very bad for your health. Now, we have Amorino in New York City. Uh, so, I don't know. I'd imagine, though, that the ingredients in France are probably better. Hmm. Looks good, that's for sure. Well, you know what's interesting is that when I was coming into uh, Fontainebleau on the train and then even on the bus from the train, it felt like more like the middle of nowhere than uh, Provence. But uh, I, I'm being in downtown Fontainebleau now. It, it feels a lot less like that. In fact, it kind of feels like well, with the exception of the notably different architecture, uh, it kind of feels like ah, being in Rockville Center on Long Island. <laughs> Just like a, a, a city that is, a town that is proximate to the big city and has a lot of the very bougie, uh, fancy pantsy features of the big city within it. Uh, so, yeah, here we go. Pedestrian plazas. Well, uh, I'll tell you this. <laughs> there is no such thing as a pedestrian plaza on Long Island or Westchester or Jersey. We have a couple in Manhattan and maybe a couple in the other boroughs, but here's a cinema over here. Walking alongside it. Definitely uh, more places to eat in. Oh, there we go. Here's an art gallery. Wonder if they would mind me coming in. There's a red boy with a red pail on his red head. I don't know, I haven't seen his head, so it's kind of hard to tell. Uh, so this is on a museum. Oh, at least I get to come to an art gallery while I'm in Fontainebleau, Blau. Bonjour. Uh, do you speak English? Yes. You do? Oh yeah, I'm just, uh, I, I, I got here too late to go to the castle, so. Oh uh, yes, they close very early. They close very early, so now I'm just kind of wandering around, seeing what else there is. Oh, look, a Ninja Turtle. <laughs> That's, that is, if I'm correct, uh, Raphael, the Ninja Turtle. Look at his, uh, he's because he's wearing the red, and he used the sights, the two knives that are in both hands. That's his weapon of choice. So, um, and he's named after Raphael, the, the artist. So, yeah, there the you artist go. Is, uh, he's a French uh, street artist. He, his name is Juan Miser. Oh, Juan Miser. Very nice. Oh. These two works are also like the same. Oh, very nice. So that's your one miser, everybody. Yeah. Uh, huh. I checked out a couple of the galleries in Paris while I was there. And, uh, what kind of art do you like? 
I, I'm just an, you know, just a general art fan of any kind of creative endeavor. So, uh. We just have a look around if you have any questions. Oh, that, merci beaucoup. <laughs> Sophie Maurice. So that is La Delay. Hul sur toile. This is a uh, Jean Paul Poix. Eclaboussure. This is also Jean-Paul Poix composition. Olivier Long, Harar. Some impressive art pieces, definitely. Uh, Leticia Giro. Man, I go to like little art galleries in Soho and Chelsea in Manhattan. And uh, it's like paints just splashed on a canvas for Jackson Pollock style. And they're like, this is art. This is, this is art right here. So look at them by Leticia Giro. Leticia Giro, sweet old world. I like it. It's got the um, the sort of impressionist kind of twist to it, like how Monet was going blind, but he he painted what he saw anyway. It looks like she's looking at a wet window or something. Uh, so these are Jean. That's Jean Alexandre de Latre. Titi. Looks like a sculpture of his dog. Very impressive stuff, right? So this is Mimi the Clown. Autoportrait à la carotte. <laughs> that one's fun. Uh, Patrick Moya. Dali dans les nuages. Patrick Moya. Moya créateur de son personnage. It's like Moya skated Dolly. That's like Moya. Moya Elan. That's like Moya Pinocchio. Pinocchio. I know who that guy is. Pinocchio, I mean. Mali style. Portrait feminin. Beautiful ladies. This looks very like Dia del Muerte, Day of the Dead, Mexican inspired over here. Agathon, Totem Hippo Hippocamp. Hmm. Agathon, Fleur de l'eau, Fleur d'eau, so flowers of water. Uh, Agathon, self Agathon, Agathon, Kigel. 94. Agathon, jungle. Jungle de la Liberté. Agathon, autumn. So again, this is kind of uh, harkens back to Impressionism a little with the sort of a street scene 
that is a little blurry. This kind of looks like Lautrec inspired. Vue de Pally. The frame is creating a bit of a glare, but if I do that, you can kind of see. It looks like Sacre, no, that looks like Notre Dame over there. Right here, here's Ari, Ari Iran. Shah. Le Shah. And over here, Masahito Hiranuma Seli Fashion. Pretty cool, right? Masahito Hiranuma, Vue de Paris et de Neuf Autres Vies. Nine other cities. Oh, here we go. Look at that. We've got the notorious B.I.G. We've got Biggie over here. And we've got uh, Snoop Dogg over here. That's Mizell uh, Ghetto. Lester's Prince. I'll show you. Oh, we've got these little little guys over here leaning into and David David. Crazy World. Equilibre. David Equilibre Domino. Oh, that's, uh, that's a precarious position to be in, sitting on the domino that's about to tumble. And this is another equilibre. Equilibre. Equilibre? I guess that's how you would say it. Very cool. So what is the name of this gallery? It's... Uh, uh, Alpha Pendo. A Fontainebleau. A Fontainebleau. Blue. Blue. You, if you are on Instagram, you can follow us. Brilliant. Okay. So I will, uh, I will reference it to my Parisian art fans and my New York art fans, and uh, they will hopefully um, come to Fontainebleau. <laughs> that would be nice. Thank would, you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. So there's, uh, there's the Instagram right there want to check that out see see this is this video is not for naught we've got some cool things to check out look at this wall one more time before we go there's also that little thing right over there oh, very cool all right so see see there's there's some content to this there's some method to this madness. There's some content to this. Delice Lamarck. Man. France is so beautiful. And here we go. It's kind of similar to uh, Paris with the street signs on the on the side of the building. So he said it was Fontainebleau, right? Fontainebleau. That's so. So what was I saying with Fontainebleau? I am so confused. I don't know. Again, this is this is very humbling. This is very humbling. This entire experience is a reminder that I do not know everything that I think I know. I know nothing, in fact. So this looks like a good little spot to maybe grab something, like a snack or something before I leave. So I'll think about it. <laughs> There's the... C'était un grand chien. See that? I just said that was a that was a big dog. See, I was. Uh, it's funny how the things I'm able to say and the things I'm not able to say. Like I feel like I know things that are 
more complicated than other things. Not that the big dog is, or that that was a big dog is that complicated of a phrase, but there are simpler things than that that I certainly don't know, which is just kind of funny. See, look at these cute little courtyards and everything when you come here. You could just walk through the thing into your entrance. It's, it's just interesting. Like, look how this place has, like, a town... There's, like, a real town square here. We just... And, and it's all pedestrian. We just don't have this. We just don't have this in America. Because everything was built around the automobile. It's like people where I grew up on Long Island, it's like they want to go to the store a block away, so they they get in a car to do it. Oh, I thought this was, <laughs> it's just a doctor's office. I thought it was, I'm like, oh, look, a plaque. Must be historical and interesting. It's just a, just a doctor's office. Ah, Lingvale. Of course, I, I am a theater person, so let's see what they've got here. So here are your stars of this particular show over here. So, uh, Next time a foreign film or something wins uh, wins an Academy Award, if it's a French film, you can be on the lookout for those names. Maybe uh, maybe you've seen them here first. Who knows? Who knows? But definitely be on the lookout for the name Peter Sullivan on the Hollywood and Broadway scene someday. <laughs> Bell in love. Yeah. Teatro Municipal. Again, the municipal theater. Rue de France. Yeah, not really, uh, not really sure where to go next, but, uh, this, this seems like a direction. <laughs> Mostly because every way is a direction. So, this is something. Ergo, it must be a direction. You see, it's that unimpeachable deductive logic that, uh, that's gotten me so f so far in life. La patisserie. Oh, not going in there.
So, Rue de France. Uh, yeah. Not sure. I feel like uh, I feel like I'm getting away from the beaten path by going that way. So I'm just gonna walk back, walk back this way, and uh, maybe put a little pep in my step. Try to do it faster. Get ready for more labored breathing, I guess. I wore my my boots today because it is very very wet outside and these boots are pretty impenetrable when it comes to water look at these like great little things you can drive through into different yards So Cuisine Francaise, maybe I want to eat there, but I don't know. Definitely want to eat before I leave. I would like to. I didn't eat in a restaurant in Provence, so I will eat at a restaurant in Fontainebleau. Fontainebleau. I think I'm. I think I finally mastered it. I think it's Fontainebleau. Oh look, we're at Manhattan. Huh. I came all the way to France so that I could go to Manhattan. All right, so I think we're gonna return to the main thoroughfare. I love that word, thoroughfare. I, I never, to be honest, either I never heard it or it never like registered as a word that people use until I started doing tour guiding. And then it's like mentioned in every single script that I have. Maybe I will come back to La France Although I have to remember that being that this is a touristy town, a lot of these places are going to be in the center of town are going to be tourist traps. So here's the cinema again, by the way. Uh, the cinema. I love the cinema. There's another place, a uh, little patisserie. Delice Imperial. Okay, so now I will walk through this narrow little thing over here and get to the other side of it. Yep. Hey, I'm a New Yorker. I'm used to these little street diversions because of construction work. Again, another more pedestrian pathway over there. And it is. So this is definitely the main, uh, the main drag over here. And I have no idea where to eat. 
So what I will do is I will end. We will be at exactly an hour in a little under five minutes. And when we get to an hour, I will uh, end the broadcast. Or the, this isn't really a broadcast. I will end the video. And uh, wherever I wind up is where I wind up and where I get food, I guess. Takami, seen that brand a lot in France. And there, of course, is Monopli, which uh, is everywhere. It's like the number one shopping spot in France. Go to a Monopli to get all of your needs. And oh, what have we here? I know what that is. This must be the clock tower from Back to the Future. Ha ha ha. Oh, it's uh, some kind of church. Uh, Pax, Pax Vobis, 1868. So, oh. It sounds like there are services going on inside. All right, well, I'm not going to enter in the middle of church services. So we'll just go elsewhere. <laughs> Besides, we're done in about two minutes. One thing that's nice about the cinematic mode, but I'm not using the cinematic mode, by the way, is that it's a lot more stable than what I'm using. There's a stabilizer on it. Uh, but it, when things get blurry, it can be very difficult to de-blur them or correct them, which is, you know, pretty awful. Uh, I wish we would happen upon something that is a little more um, of a nice uh, aesthetic way of tying the whole thing together and ending the video, but that's probably not going to happen. Uh, I guess we've got this this nice little courtyard whatever you want to call it over here. Uh, it'll be a nice place to grab something to eat up over here. Hopefully, uh, there, there are very weird restaurant hours in France because uh, apparently French people are very uh, particular about when they have their meals. So restaurants actually close down for giant windows of time in the mid-afternoon and uh, other times when people don't typically eat, which is different than America where restaurants are just open all the time. All right, I guess I'll go to Café des Halles. Café des Halles is where I will eat. Oh, and look, it's got its little tobacco sign. Not that I'm a smoker, but uh, yeah. Thanks for coming in, everybody. And I hope you enjoyed Fontainebleau. Au revoir.